Join us, friends. Great Scott, spa guy. Do they know what we have in store for them? They will if they tighten up. And don't double dribble. To the Grey Ghost, spa guy? Exactly, old chum. No time to waste. To the Grey Ghost. We have not a minute to spare. It's showtime, friends. All right, all right, all right. It is the spa guy. Now I'm glowing. It is. Yeah, I think I'm, what am I, spa guy? I'm globe trotting with Trey. That's right. Globe trotting with Trey. It says it right there. And we are not wishing Cotton was a monkey, but we know that there's a lot of monkeys out there that are wishing Cotton was a monkey. I'll tell you that. A lot of clowns. And uh, in today's episode, we're going to talk about a Disney cruise that I got to go on to the Bahamas. Right. And uh, I have only ever been on one other cruise. Have you ever been on a cruise before, Trey? I have never been on a cruise. They are, uh, Lori and I got to go on one when my son, Trey, uh, my, by the way, I have a son named Trey that's a little younger than you, not much, but a few years younger. It's a good name. And, and same name. And he's Billy the third. And that's why we call him Trey. And you're Charles the third. So that's why you're called Trey. And, uh, when Trey was a baby, I won, uh, I worked for Ford Motor Company. I worked, I was service manager at a Ford dealership. We know them Ford in LaGrange, North Carolina. And one of my awards from Ford Motor Company was we got to go on a, uh, a cruise, all expenses paid. It was Norwegian Cruise Lines. I don't remember the name of the ship. I remember being on it, but I'll be honest with you. I don't even remember where we even got on the ship at. Um, I have no recollection of that. And my son is, he was born in 1990. So in February, he will be 34. So it was about 33 years ago. And I have very vague recollections of any of it. Um, and you would think I went on one cruise one time that I would remember everything about it, right? So you're telling me like you you forget things when you get older? You know what? I think you forget things when a year later, if it's not significant to you. And especially that happened one time. Um, especially things that you may have done a hundred times. Yeah. That's really not going to stick out. So all those memories are going to run together. And my only memories of it is, um, during that time, even though I was doing well, I was managing this company. We was still a time when you didn't make a lot of money. Like you do people make a lot of money. Now, back then, if you were making $300 a week, $400 a week in 1990, that was a lot of money. And, um, um, back then I was making, um, I was making good money, but I still wasn't, wasn't well off by any stretch, I guess is the, is the best way to say it. If, uh, I think by then we were probably where we could go eat every Friday night. I always gauge it by that. I've told you that before the early on in my marriage, there was times on Friday night. We, it wasn't whether we were going to go eat. It was whether we could whether we had the money to go eat Friday night. And we still go out to eat every Friday night. We've always done that when our kids were little, when they were grown, when they were teenagers, we go out and eat every Friday night. It's just something that we do. And, um, but at that time, what I remember from it was that I was able to take $300 cash with me, um, which nowadays doesn't sound like a whole lot, but at the time that was a lot of money to me. And, we're not gamblers, especially Lori would not be a gambler at all. And I got her to go, this particular ship did have a, uh, a casino on it. Uh oh. And I got her to go to this casino. And I think we decided that we were going to spend $10 each. And she's in her $10, she won $90 <laughs> and she cashed out and left. That's and that was it. She That's never went back. She got her $10 and got out of there. I like that, Lori. And um, she went but, shop with that money. Yeah, she went shop with that money because that was ninety free. That was that was twenty five percent. You know, if you figure it's three hundred dollars and ninety dollars, that's almost four hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Now that's twenty five percent of our money, and it's free money. So she went and um, uh, well, if you took took away the ten that she may have spent to get the ninety dollars, it would be uh, three eighty technically. But anyway, for all of you math whizzes, because I know there's people screaming at the computer. Um, 
the things that I remember about it was the best steak, the best surf and turf I ever had in my life I had on that boat. And it was a uh, steak and um, uh, lobster. And you know I like steak and lobster. In fact, I had steak and lobster recently. Was it last year? Me and you went to George Klein's favorite restaurant off of Poplar. What's the name of that restaurant? Um, um, Jen, uh, Jen, Jen, Jen asked me. Uh, well, pretend like I didn't ask you. Let me see if I can now look look that up while I'm while I'm thinking of, talking about this. But anyway, part of it was all of the other people on the boat, or most of the other people on the boat, were Ford people. I think everybody was service managers and parts managers. And in fact, the lady that I worked with, I've talked about her before. Debbie Jones is her name. Sadly, Debbie has passed away. Uh, but Debbie was great at her job. Debbie went before me um, on the trip because she won the trip too. So she went one week, a couple of weeks later, I went with Lori. And um, part of it is you had to dress up. I had to rent a tux. <laughs> So we had to dress up. Lori had to have a formal dress and we would have dinner with the captain, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. And uh, you always sat with four people and it would be the same people. And it was kind of awkward because you're sitting with people, even though we're all in the same business, we don't know each other. But there was a little bit of an awkwardness to that. But the best surf and turf, the best steak and lobster I think I've ever had, and it may have been the first time I ever had lobster, was on that boat right there. It was Norwegian Cruise Lines, as I mentioned. And it would have been around 1990 or 1991. Yeah. I know our son was a baby. And so I think it may have been in December of 90 or January of 91, somewhere thereabouts. Um, but I remember I watched a movie on there. I played bingo. I watched Days of Thunder. They had a movie theater. and I watched Days of Thunder. Right. I do remember that. They had bingo on there. We played bingo. And it was one of those things where while we were on the ship, I don't think I realized that I was having fun. But when I got back to work, it hit me. You know what? That was awesome. <laughs> it was it was really good food. Yeah. They waited on his hand and foot. There was stuff to do. It was, you know, we really actually had a good time. And I do remember when I got back at work, standing at the service desk, kind of feeling like that. Like still on a boat the boat was still rocking yeah and um so we tried to prepare for that this time by taking uh some uh dramamine and uh non-drowsy dramamine and also lori bought these things they call them c-bands and in the videos i'll put some videos out about this later you'll see in my on my arms i'm wearing these these black bands and what it is is it has a little white thing here with a point on it and it's acupuncture. You're supposed to put your three fingers like that. Let me show you. And where your third finger is, if you put the acupuncture point right there dead in the middle, it keeps you from being seasick. Okay. So I wore those C-bands the whole time. And I and I did take um, the Dramamine every day as well, the non-drowsy Dramamine. And between those two things, I didn't get any seasickness whatsoever. But I will say that I didn't even get the thing where when I got back, I felt the the land, the the boat rocking. Yeah. The land rocking. It, it never did that to me. Um, but the boat, whoever was piloting this ship, man, it was smooth. It was very rare for it to rock or do anything for you to even notice it. It was smooth sailing all the way. And I see all these TikTok videos, and I know you've probably seen them where um, these cruise ships go out and they get in these storms and stuff and it's busting glass and waves washing in the, I'm, I didn't, it was all absolutely perfectly smooth. And what's interesting is that the last time I went, the cruise went to, uh, the Bahamas, went to Nassau and we got off the boat that day. And then we went to a private Island that was owned by Norwegian cruise lines. This time on the Disney cruise, we went to Nassau, Bahamas. And then we went to a private island called Castaway Cay that's owned by Disney, or they leased it from the uh, bo Bohemian government for 99 years. And so it was a very, very similar cruise. I just have very little recollection of being in Nassau. Um, so we'll talk about that later in the video 
Um, and I really thought, you know, I've been there before. I can, I do, this is a memory that I have. And that is Lori and I got off the ship. And remember, we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have disposable income where we could just throw money away. Okay. And so when we got off the ship, I remember these young girls running up to us and putting necklaces around our neck and going, welcome to the islands. And they were made out of shells. And they were saying, welcome to the islands. You know, we were like, oh, cool, man. We're in the Bahamas. Woo, this is pretty awesome. Well, we need a donation. And I was like, okay. So I pulled my money out and I gave them a dollar and they were no like $5. And I go, no, you know what? I don't. don't want <laughs> you you know, took so, it <laughs> Yeah. So we were getting hassled, you know. And uh, so I just said no to the $5 and gave them back. And Debbie had warned me that that was going to happen. And she was exactly right. But I can remember walking in that, that happening. And I know that I walked down into the Bahamas and walked around, but I have zero recollection of any of it. You know, I thought maybe like right now, for instance, if, if I went to New Orleans, if we went to New Orleans right now, I could take you to uh, all of the Elvis spots without a map right now. I could. Um, if I went to Biloxi, I could take you to all the Elvis spots without a map. If I went to Los Angeles, I couldn't take you to them without a map because they're so far apart, but I could drive up a street and go, there it is. I'd recognize it. You know what I'm saying? I, I'd have some sense of where we're at. I have, n I don't have that at all with the Bahamas. Um, I had just, I, and I don't know why we, we're not drinkers or anything like that. So I didn't drink or. And we could have on that, on the, the first cruise, it was all inclusive, everything. You could drink, do whatever you want to. Um, I just don't do well with drinking. So I just don't, um, it makes me sick. And, uh, but one thing that I do recall is Debbie telling me about a two story McDonald's and they still have a two story McDonald's there. I did see it now, whether it's the same building or not, it's probably in the same place, but I doubt it's the same building from what 30, almost 34 33 years ago. Um, but they they have a new thing that when, when you got off the ship, so the thing is, is when you're in the Bahamas, you have to take a passport. You can't just, it, you're traveling to a different country. So you can't just go there. So they, I took my passport off the boat with me. I didn't ever have to show it to anybody, but I did have to show it to get on the boat. Um, but when we got off the boat and went into, uh, and I, I say we, it was actually me. I got off the boat. Uh, but you know what? Let's not go into that yet. Let's go into that later in the in the episode because uh, I have a tie to another story that we'll do. So let's back up and talk about getting to the boat. So we had, we've had this plan for six months plus. It's probably been longer than that. And what we were going to do was fly out of Nashville, fly to Fort Lauderdale, get on the boat, do all this, get back off the boat, go back to Fort Lauderdale, fly back to Nashville, get in my truck like I always do. I leave it at Park and Fly. You've been with me before. We'll go to Park and Fly, and they'll take us in a limousine over and drop us off yep. and then pick us back up. You've done that with me. And um, that was our plan. So it snowed. The, the, the day before we're supposed to go, we have a snowstorm here, and it's seven or eight inches. And so we're thinking, well, they're going to clean this up. And actually, I think it may have been two days before that it snowed. But we're thinking, well, they'll have it cleaned up by that day. We'll, we'll be good to go. Nope. Our flight was canceled that morning. We got up the morning our flight's supposed to go. Well, the problem is, is if we don't go get on that boat, it's paid for. We don't get our money back. You don't get your money we didn't back. expect it to snow. We didn't buy insurance for that. Yeah. Who thinks it's... You know how odd, how rare it is for it to snow enough to 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 be a problem, and uh, very very rare. And it does snow, and it is a problem when it snows, but it's rare. And so anyway, we get on the um, uh, we get up that morning. They've canceled our flights, and we're like, so they go, oh well, we're going to set you a flight tomorrow morning. So I'm like, mm, you've already canceled my flight one time. I don't know if I trust y'all enough to do that. Right. So what we did was drove to Atlanta, took flights out of Atlanta, um, flew to Fort Lauderdale and stayed. So I had to drive, what, four and a half hours, four, yeah, about four and a half hours. I did park and fly in Atlanta, uh, got on uh, the airplane, flew to Fort Lauderdale and stayed at the Embassy Suites, 
got up about five o'clock in the morning and went to Fort Lauderdale airport, did park and fly. Like I mentioned, got on or actually, what am I saying? Um, Atlanta. Yeah. I, I'm actually, I'm telling, I'm telling it wrong. We drove to Atlanta and stayed at NBC suites. We got up at five o'clock in the morning and took flights out of Atlanta the next morning. So uh, I, I had that thing in my mind. I'm going by what I was supposed to do, not what I actually did. So we flew out of uh, Atlanta on the, the day of the day we're getting on the boat. So it all worked out. We actually had reservations to get on the boat about 1.15 from my memory. So what they do is because there's so many people getting on the boat, I think there was 4,000 people on the boat, not counting crew. So they have to do it in sections. And so what happened is when we got off of the airplane at Fort Lauderdale and we went to luggage where you, the carousels, I noticed that there was a thing set up for the Disney cruise. There was representatives there. So we walk over and we talk to them. We go, Hey, you know, we're here now. Is it possible that we get a shuttle? Because we were planning on, we already had a shuttle set up from the hotel we were going to stay at in Fort Lauderdale already paid for. Well, we had to cancel those. So we had to shuttle from the airport to the, uh, to the boat. And they went, yeah, we've got buses right outside. It's $25 per person. And so if you hop on this and I said, but I, my thing is not till one fifteen. No, if you're on this boat, it supersedes all that. So it actually worked out really nice. And what I was afraid of is us sitting around for long periods of time, which luckily didn't happen. So we go, uh, we pay, we sign up, we get our luggage, we go get on the bus immediately. And in 30 minutes, the bus is on its way. We pull up to the port, we get out, they make you go through um, security again to get on the boat. You give them their luggage. When you sign up for Disney Cruise, they send you a packet with your luggage tags and all that stuff in it. So you go ahead and put that on. And when you get off of the bus there, they take your luggage and they you never see it again until it shows up at your room on the boat. And uh, so you don't have to deal with it, which is very nice. And you go ahead and tip the bus driver because he put your luggage under the bus and you tip the people that are putting it on these luggage carts and making sure it gets on the boat because I want to make sure those two things happen. And uh, so then we go and they they get you to go into this area, which is for Disney. It's owned by Disney. And it's a giant room and you go through security, you show your passport, you show your ticket to, uh, to get on the boat, your ID and all that. And then they just have a place you go sit down. And there's a lady that's holding up, they'll, they'll over an intercom, they'll say, downloading, uh, I don't remember how they put it, but maybe section one, section two. And she'll hold up this thing and walk around with it and flip section three, section four. And I think, or I, th I think it's group one, group two, group three. The, the uh, folks that were traveling with us, which is my family, they were group eight. Lori and I were group 16, I think, or 17. And, uh, but, and you think that there's a long time between group eight and group 17, but it wasn't very long right. because a lot of the people are not there yet that are in those groups. Because the other thing you got to think about is we were there early. So there's people flying in all times of the day before the boat takes off at 4.30 or 5 o'clock that night. And um, so there, so we were lucky that we were literally sitting there and she flipped like 8, 9, 10, 11. It was that fast. So I said, Lori, let's go. So we get on and all we've got is our backpacks because you want to take things on the boat with you and not put it in your luggage if you're going to need medicine, if you're going to need a coat. If you're going to need your computer or anything that you would want to have with you um, that you may need before you see your luggage that night. Like you're not, you're tell me again. Like you're flying on an airplane. Yeah, like you're like flying on an airplane. And they, they would call it a day bag, but I use I carry a, a backpack. You know that. Yeah. And so we go through that. We go up and we go across the gangland. And, of course, I film all this stuff. This will all be in videos that I'm showing you. And when you go on the boat, you show them your tickets again and all that stuff and your ID. And then they announce you. Welcome to the Stallings family. Oh, for <laughs> real? Oh, yeah. Yeah, just like old Love Boat. 
Now, oh, okay. sure if you've ever seen an episode of Love Boat. Oh, yeah. But see, in my day, Love Boat came on on Thursday night or on Friday nights. Oh, yeah. And then after Love Boat was Fantasy Island. So from 9 to 10 was Love Boat. From 10 to 11 was Fantasy Island every Friday night. Really? <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that was regular TV for us. That was must-see TV every Friday night. And so I think on the Love Boat that they announced people as they came on the boat from my memory. And uh, I haven't seen an episode of Love Boat in a long time, but it was an all, always all-star cast. Everybody that was anybody was on Love Boat. Yeah, that's celebrities yeah. coming in there. Yeah. It was kind of like the Johnny Carson show. Right. You know, if you were anybody, you were on Johnny Carson, you were on Love Boat or that kind of stuff. Had a so thing. anyway, <laughs> we, um, um, we get on the boat. And the first thing we do is we they you can't go to your room until 3.30. So we're on the boat at like 12. And so we're hungry. So we go to eat. So they immediately feed you as soon as you get on the boat. So we go to a place called Cabanas, which is on deck 11 in the back of the boat. It's in the aft of the boat. And it's a uh, uh, buffet. And it's got uh, crab legs and shrimp. And um, it's got a lot of uh, steak and... Uh, uh, what is the beef that they'll cut off for you when you walk up? Prime, prime rib, yeah, that kind of stuff. They'll cut it off for you. Salads, um, just a variety of stuff, a variety of um, uh, desserts, a little bit of everything. And uh, they, they've got uh, chicken tenders and and French fries and just all kinds of stuff. So it's all paid for. This, oh, it's all prepaid. Yeah. And uh, so it's, I'll, and, I, and I'll get to that in a minute because I've been to Disney a lot. And when you go to Disney, I'll just go ahead and get this out of there. Whenever you go to Disney and let's say you go to Epcot and you want to eat in the French restaurant, we love, there's a French restaurant that we always love to eat there. But the hard part is at the end of it, you got to pay the bill. Okay. Cause it's expensive. And so here, not the buffet, but other restaurant experiences were very similar to what would happen at Disney because it was a Disney cruise. But at the end of it, there's no bill. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's, a party it's yeah, it's part of the ticket. It's kind of guilt free. You go in and you enjoy yourself and you don't think, oh, well, got this big bill coming at the end. Of course, I don't worry about that stuff anyway, but I know you do. And uh, <laughs> Trey. And it's not because Trey doesn't have money. It's just because he's a cheapskate. But anyway, um, he likes to say he's frugal, but we all know. <laughs> hey, now so, you know. I've, I've paid some big bills before. I know you have. I'm picking on you, Trey. And uh, so Trey's paid Folk some Folks Folk 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 That's it. Folk 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 Folk. That's and I, I, paid, I, I paid a big sip on that that night. Yeah, you did. And uh, hey, it was a big bill, but we we had some good food there. And I haven't put that video out yet, but I will. And oh, where we went, we actually sat in George's table. Yep. And the guy that waited on us was the guy that used to wait on George. I know GK. That's right. right. That's right. And uh, he told us that GK uh, and Red West sat there. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Yep. That's that's cool stuff. So anyway, so we go ahead and eat, and then we've got to find something to do. So what they do is. Uh, before you can go to your room, and I'm tired. I'm ready, man. We we drove all day and then flew and got up early in the morning. I'd like to go take a nap, you know. So we go out, but what they're doing then is they know that people are eating and they're needing something to do. They can't get to the rooms. So around on deck 11 in the middle, there's swimming pools and they have a giant screen and they have a stage and it's, they're doing a show. So it's Disney characters doing a whole show for you. And so they start doing that. They're doing things to keep you occupied. You can still get ice cream. There's always ice cream 24 wow. seven. There's a place you could just go to and it's, and you grab a cone and, and you go and there's drinks 24 um, seven. Any, and I like sparkling water. They have sparkling water in a, you just go like that. And uh, there's Coke and all that kind of stuff. And so we had to spend some time. And of course I'm filming because I'm wanting to, get a uh, video of the port, what's going on around the boat, how they're getting us out, how they're moving us and all that. I even set a camera up. Once I get, before they move the boat, 
you're in your room. You get your room and you're all that stuff. So I set a camera up on my deck, which was deck nine, um, pointing out. So I have a video of the boat. You can't see the boat, but it's from the boat where we pull out and they turn around and then go out to the to the ocean because they pull in. So they have to go out and make a three uh, 180 and so they can go out. So I have a video of it coming out and making a 180 and then going out to the Atlantic Ocean. And um, so uh, anyway, we finally get we get we get through eating and we walk around the boat and we look and we do some different things. There's no shops open, so but because they can't sell you stuff on the boat without charging you sales tax. So the shops are never open when you're on land. They only are open when you're out there, so you don't pay tax. Okay. Oh, that's cool. And um, so there was no shop. We couldn't do shopping. So we were trying to find things to do to keep us occupied till 3.30. And about three, we were hoping maybe they'll open the rooms early. So we go sit on deck nine right by where the, the door is to get down the hallway. And it doesn't open one second before 3.30. At 3.30, they come take the, the thing down to let you in. So we finally do that. And we walk down. And they have your keys where your room number is, our room number is pre-assigned and we were side by side with our family. So we had a door that we could come through to see each other. And we had adjoining decks as well. And so we, uh, your key is in a envelope sitting on top of your, your room number. So you grab that, that's how you open your door. And it even says, if this is already pre-opened, tell somebody in case somebody came and stole a key out of it to try to come in your room to rob you or whatever. Like, yeah, yeah. Just for safety, they tell you that. So we go in and I film the room, of course, and film the deck and set my camera up and stuff. I take a nap and then we have to, to get ready for dinner. And so the way they did dinner on the Disney cruise is very interesting. And that is that you have the same, there's different restaurants, but the people that wait on you the first night wait on you every time in every restaurant. So we were table 44. So when you're at table 44, our very first night was Art of Animation was the name of the restaurant. The next morning you had, or the next night, you had, um, you know what? It, the, yeah, okay. So the next night was... Um, uh, garden, uh, enchanted garden. So in table 44, same waiters or same staff, maybe in male or female. The next morning for breakfast, uh, enchanted garden. So it, it was a thing where the reason I think they do that is they want those people to know you and be personalized to you. So it's more of a personal thing. They know you by name. And uh, so literally you have a guy that takes care of your room. Ours was Orlando. When I walk up, Mr. Billy, do you need anything? Is everything okay in your room? And he's your guy the whole time. So if you need something, you find Orlando and you tell him what you need and he takes care of it. Takes care of it. So he makes up your bed. If you take a nap and you come. So in the morning when you get up and you go to breakfast and you leave, when you come back, your bed's made up. Your room's ready. If you take a nap and you leave and you go to supper, when you come back, your bed's made up and he's made some kind of an animal and there's chocolate on your bed, <laughs> you know? And so it was ultra, ultra, ultra good service. And the other thing is, is tips for those people is built into your ticket price, but you can tip them additional money. So I think that's why they want them to be particular to you. So you feel like they took care of you. So you feel like you could take care of them. And um, so it was great service all the way around. And I almost didn't understand. The other thing that was curious to me about, about things like supper is we had to be to supper, I think, at 545. And the thing was, is it was a giant restaurant and everybody lined up and it was a long line. But as soon as they opened the door at 545, you go sit at your table. And that's your table um, until you're done. So it was not a thing where you're waiting in line. As soon as the thing opens, it's basically taking you and seating you. So the line goes really quick. But everybody's ordering at the same time. It's not graduated where someone comes in at 545 and somebody at 6 and 615 and 6. 
It's not like that. Everybody comes at 545. So while you're there at 545, there's a show going on. Usually we watch Beauty and the Beast. So there's people that would eat at eight o'clock that are watching Beauty and the Beast while you're eating at 545. When you get out from 545, you go to Beauty and the Beast. Those people are out. They go to eat at eight. You see, so they had a way of turning the tables on the whole ship and feeding these 4,000 people. At a certain time. So you had a time to be there. You had to be there. 45. Yeah. And you had to choose the time that you wanted to be there, eight or 545. So those are things that you preset. Mm-hmm. And in between those times for lunch, for breakfast, they have a breakfast buffet back there at Cabana's or you could go to the Enchanted Garden or you could go to, um, they had, you could do room service, by the way, free, no charge, just like eating at all the other places. So if you didn't want to leave your room, you could do that. Um, so there was a lot of, uh, they even had a hamburger and hot dog place that you could go eat at for lunch. If you didn't want to do the buffet or you didn't want to do room service or you didn't want to do so there was all these different options because they've got to feed 4,000 people on this big boat three times a day, mm. you know, and then all day long you can snack. You just go get whatever you want, whenever you want it. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And it was, it was really, really good. So um, the whole thing was fantastic. Smooth water at night, they would get out. And so when we left, I, I, let me touch on this. So the day that we left, which was a Wednesday night, they go out to the Atlantic. And if you're looking at Florida, Florida's like this, and I'm going to go try to, to do it opposite. The Bahamas are out here. It's not down here. So the Bahamas are to, to the east of Florida, you know, where we're at at Fort Lauderdale. So they're heading out there. And <clears throat> what they would do is get between Castaway K and between Nassau, and the boat would zigzag. And you can even see it on your TV screen. It'll show you where your boat's at on like a GPS thing. You, you can actually look at it like an airplane. Some of the big airplanes will do that. And it'll show you that they had a course set to go do this. So the next day, you're just cruising. You're not really going anywhere. They're just driving around, basically. But it's turning in such a short radius to make those turns. You don't ever notice the boat turns. It just feels like you're just underway all the time. And it was always really smooth. And they even had the next day, they talked about no sunlight because we wanted to go sit by the pool the next day. And they've got these slides. They've got this big slide that's in these glass tubes that you ride through on these inner tubes and stuff. And they've got all these cool slides. And you want to do that, but you don't want to be cold and there's no sunlight. So they actually cruise to the sunlight. They said, we found where there's an opening in the clouds and we're heading there. Y'all, everybody stand by. So suddenly you've got sun. So they would actually go seek the sun out if there was cloud cover, if they could find yeah. the place. And it was hot enough for you to be out and doing that. Yeah, it, it was, it was the whole, the whole thing was really nice. We watched Beauty and the Beast. We saw the movie, what was that movie called? Um, it's a new movie called, uh, it must not have been much. I can't remember it. Um, what was it about? It was about a, 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 an evil king. It was a new movie. Um, let me look that up real quick while we're talking. How long does it take for you to ride a boat from Fort Lauderdale to the Bahamas? I would think that not very long. Um, I would think just a few hours. Wish was the name of the movie, W-I-S-H, that we watched on the boat. But it, as the crow flies, I think it's only from Fort Lauderdale. I think it's only seventy miles, so it's not very, very far. And so that's what I'm saying. The stuff is not far away. So in order for it to be a cruise, they just have to get out, and just drive around. They just they just drive around to make it like a, you're on a boat to make it be a cruise. That's yeah. right. Because literally, they could go from there to the Bahamas, and you could sit there, and then so the first day you cruise around all day. The next morning when you get up, you're at Nassau, Bahamas. So I filmed all that. I set a camera up, pulling into the port. And actually, as I'm pulling in, as we're getting to Nassau, the one end of Paradise Island, there's a lighthouse there. I didn't know it was there, but I captured it on camera. And so there's uh, a boat that comes by. There's kind of a jetty. And then there's a lighthouse. And as the boat turns, you see that it's right on Paradise Island. So... 
um, something that I figured out, and we're running short of time again, boy. We can I can really talk, can I? Um, something that um, that I knew that there was a story, but I researched it was that Elvis actually went to the Bahamas. October 1969, him, Priscilla, uh, Joe Esposito and his wife, and uh, Jerry Schilling and his wife decided to go to the Bahamas. So they went to Nassau, they went to Paradise Island, and they stayed at the Paradise Island Hotel, which happens to still be there. And there's photographs of this. So when I knew that I was going to Nassau, I thought, this is a twofer. <laughs> So I go there, I get off the boat that morning and I knew that I remembered last time that I was there. Now, this is one thing that I recalled from being there in 1990, 91, was that you had to pay a toll to get across the bridge. Back then, if you were going to walk across the bridge, you had to pay a toll from my memory. And I, knew, I didn't go over to Paris, Paradise Island back then. I remember that. And it's still a pretty good walk. But this time I had to because I'm going to film an Elvis story while I'm there. So what I do is when I get off the boat and I'm walking, you have to get off and turn right to go uh, to where you go through the place to get into the Bahamas, to Nassau. There was a place there that said a boat will take you to Paradise Island. I'm like, okay, well, heck, that'll stop me from having to walk. So I walk up to the guy and I go, how much? He said, $7 there, $7 back. I go, I'll take two. I'll take a <laughs> ticket there, a ticket back. So I, in my video that I'll put out, I'll probably put out the video about just the Elvis part of it. And then I'll put a video about me going to Nassau and all the different stuff I saw. It'll be two different things because there's so much to see. So anyway, I take the boat at seven bucks. I give the guy a tip and he's telling funny stories. Like he goes, that has one that stuck with me was, by the way, there was a, a, a boat there. I don't think I, I might've sent you a picture of it, but it was Steven Spielberg's yacht. It's 300, almost 400 feet long. But when I looked it up, it says that he sold it this month. So I don't know if he was using it before it was sold, but he, the, his yacht was parked right beside our boat. Okay. And so I've got video and pictures of that yacht. Uh, it's called Seven Seas is the name of the boat. Didn't have so any anyway, side of it, right? Yeah, right on the side. Giant boat, almost 400 feet long. So you didn't see E.T. on the side I, of the boat. I didn't. It said Seven Seas. That's all. <laughs> And uh, so, but I did zoom in to see if I could see Spielberg, but you know, I, I haven't reviewed the footage. So anyway, I go across and the boat takes us right to the foot of the bridge. So they dock there. I get off and I walk and I get up to, and you've seen this footage. I get up to the uh, top where you walk across the bridge and I go to where they've got to go through uh, a toll right there to get into Paradise Island. And it's called City, Sydney Poitier Bridge or Sydney Poitier Toll Bridge. It's got his picture up there. And uh, so it's named after Sydney Poitier. So anyway, I'm talking to looking at people and filming. And then I walk around the corner and it hits me that they're driving on the long, wrong side of the road, like in England. They drive on the left hand side of the road rather than the right. And I actually say that to two guys that are that have a Mercedes that they're putting water in or something on the side of the road. And they go, no, we're driving. The right side is the left side. And I go, no, the right side's the right side. They're kind of sensitive about it, you know, but their <laughs> steering wheel's on the wrong side, but they were a little sensitive about it. But anyway, so I go and I'm walking and I'm trying to find this hotel. I know where it's at on my GPS, on my map. And I ended up renting one of those scooters. You know how you can oh, put yeah. the app on your thing and I rent a scooter because it turned out it was a little ways because when Elvis was there, there's a lot of buildings that were not there. So back then I could have walked through. Now there's giant buildings in the way. So I had to go all the way around. And when I talked to one of the security guards, he said, uh, he said, oh man, that place is closed now. I was like, closed? He said, yeah, it got shut down, got bought by somebody, got shut down. I'm like, crap. So anyway, I get around there. And when I do, they've got one of those fences around it, like they're going to do construction or destruction. And there's a notice on it that says, Demolition notice. Oh, Dag on it. They're getting ready to tear this hotel down. So anyway, through some more investigation, I figured out that they're actually restoring the hotel. They're demolishing like the pool and stuff like that to update it. But the structure of the building, they are saving and redoing. So luckily, the, the original structure will still be there. But anyway, so what I did was went 
I couldn't go through there. So I went to the hotel beside it and took my camera and kind of put it down beside me and walked real close to a guy because I noticed they all had wristbands on. So I walked real close to a guy through the hotel, walked out by the pool, walked out and walked out on the beach. So the security guard, there was a security guard there and I got real close to the guy like I was with him. So he wouldn't see that I didn't have a band on. And so I walked through there and walk out on the beach. And then I'm behind the hotel that Elvis stayed in. And then I turn around and look, and there's that scene that's behind Elvis and all those photos yep. where, and that scene is to the right of Elvis in the photos. And I, the video will come out real soon. If you, if you hadn't, or if it's not already out, it will come out soon, friends, if you're listening or watching this. But to the right of Elvis behind him, uh, there's trees, a clump of trees. And then to the left of him, you see a thing behind him. So when you're standing on the beach, what I would expect is maybe a clump of trees to the right, but behind him, it would just be beach line. Well, no, where when you're standing behind that hotel looking, there's a, a jetty or a jut out of land that has trees on it. So in the photos, you see that jut out behind Elvis and the fan. There's actually several Elvis and fan photos from there. There's photos of Elvis and Priscilla inside the hotel. There's photos of Elvis going to see the band that's there wearing a, a suit he dressed up. Um, there's photos of Elvis with the band in there, but I couldn't get in the building, sadly, to, um, to, to do the lineups and stuff. So maybe the next time I go back, it'll be um, – it'll because we're planning on going on a cruise at least once or twice a year. Now that we've done it, it's great, and we're going to do it more. Um, especially during the winter. Cause I left Nashville by the way, with eight inches of snow. When I got back, there was still eight inches of snow on the ground. It didn't, it didn't thaw. It got colder while we were gone. So I was literally swimming in, uh, the next day, the last day we go to, um, well, let me, let me finish the Elvis story. So I get all my stuff, all my lineups, and then I go and I get back and I get back on the boat. So that night we go to dinner. We do all of our normal stuff. The next day we get up and we go to, um, it's called Castaway K. Tied up. And like like we, everyone. Else. We technically have three minutes left, but it'll go a little bit over that. But we go to a place called Castaway K, which is a private island, which is owned by um, or leased by Disney. It's their island. It's about uh, 50, I think they said that it was about 50 acres and they use about five acres of it. There's a landing strip on it. Some scenes from Pirates of the Caribbean were filmed there. Some scenes from the movie Splash with um, where she walks out of the ocean as a mermaid. I think that was filmed there. Um, so anyway, they've got a thing where you get off the boat and you, you can go and you can take a shuttle so you don't have to walk all the way up. But they'll shuttle you up to the uh, to place and you get off and there's beach there. And there's it's a jetty and it's only maybe six or seven feet deep or eight feet deep at the deepest part. And they've got it set up where it's ocean water. It's coming from the ocean. Literally, if you look at the maps, what's crazy is there's a jetty. when you When you're standing on the beach looking out, at the water. So if you're standing on the beach looking out, there's a jetty out there. If you go look at the topographical stuff on Google Earth, you see that just on the other side of that jetty is like the continental shelf. It falls off to thousands of feet deep. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's really crazy. I mean, it's literally right there. And um, so uh, I, I snorkeled. I got snorkeling equipment and went out and snorkeled. And they had things under the water for you to find. Like uh, they had a, um, a, mi a Minnie Mouse under there, like a statue of Minnie Mouse. They had a statue of a prince under there like that, a giant one. They had old boats and propellers, just different things for you to go find. So you had something to see. And there was fish in there about that big, some that big, tiger fish and different things. And so it was a lot of fun. And I just love to snorkel. I've always liked to do that. And so it was kind of surreal. On Saturday, I'm swimming in the Caribbean, snorkeling. Sunday, I'm back in Nashville, and there's still snow on the ground, eight inches. Literally, when I pull up in front of my house, there's ice on my street. I almost couldn't get up the street. If I hadn't had four-wheel drive, I couldn't have got to my house. Wow. And uh, so literally, that's the, the difference in two days. Um, 
And the other little interesting thing that happened was just this week, they put out a notice. I'm going to show you the notice right here. This is a Bahamas travel advisory. And it's saying, it says, exercise increased caution in the Bahamas due to crime. Country summary. The majority of crime occurs in New Province, Nassau, which is where I was. You were, yep. And Grand Bahamas Freeport Islands. In Nassau, practice increased vigilance in the over-the-hill area south of Shirley Street, where gang-on-gang -gang violence has resulted in a high homicide rate, primarily affecting the local population. Violent crimes such as burglaries, armed robberies, and sexual assaults occur in both tourist and non-tourist areas. Be vigilant when staying at short-term vacation rental properties where private security companies do not have presence. Activities involving commercial recreational watercraft, including water tours, are not consistently regulated. And the boat that I took across there, boy, there's no regulation there because I told you, man, it was like Sanford's son was man in that boat. You felt, you felt something went right on that. I did. I looked around and thought, hmm. And But other people got on the boat too, so it made me feel a little more comfortable. But it says watercraft may be poorly maintained and some operators may not have safety certifications. <laughs> so anyway, that came out literally when I got back. You didn't see that before. It popped up. I did not know. So an interesting statistic I want you to think about. They have, this month, it's the 28th day of, of January, 2024. This month, they issued this because of murders happening in the Bahamas, right? Because they said that it was a high amount of murders. Guess how many it was? A high amount of murders in the Bahamas. Yeah. In, in the first 28 days. In 28 days? Yeah. Mm, high amount. Uh, up was, to today. Huh? Up to today. Up to today. So in 28 days, what I would think a high amount of murders would be? Yeah. Uh, 10. Okay. So it was 18, which is a high amount of murders, right? Yes. Okay. So... I've had a lot of people give me a lot of guff about me putting a video out saying, hey, when you go to Memphis, just make sure. I did the same alert that you just saw from the U.S. government. All I did was said, hey, when you go there, you just need to know. This right here is from travstate.com. This is not me making something up. This yeah. is a government uh, entity putting out a travel warning for a place that's had 18 murders. Last year, Memphis averaged 28 murders a month. No way. Yeah, that's 10 more than the Bahamas. It just more than the Bahamas. Bahamas. So why are they not giving us alerts about not going to That's Memphis? what I'm saying. So they're giving me guff. I've had people go, how dare you do that? Yeah. The government issued a travel warning to a place that only had 18 murders and not a place that had 28 average last year. Well, no, yeah, you, you did that because you wanted people that follow our shows uh, that see our location videos to know, be careful when you go to this city. That's right. Uh, based off of my experiences, based off of what I know, and based off of these stats, be careful when you go to Memphis. I mean, how can somebody hate on you for that? I mean, it's not, the thing is, I remember the time period. You put that video out, and then two weeks later, they had all those carjackings, uh, and, uh, uh, and then that- That lady was taken. Teacher was kidnapped and murdered. And then a guy goes off on a Facebook, uh, Instagram live and kills people just going into stores. Just walking into places, Instagram live and shooting them and walking that out. That was all right after uh, mm -hmm. weeks, two weeks after you put a video out talking about the safety and how dangerous this place was. And I have had people get on me because I put that warning out. And the reason I did that was a lot of people, let's just say this. A lot of people go to Graceland and go to Memphis because of mine and your videos. That's a fact. That is not up for debate. That is a fact. Mm -hmm. I don't want someone to go to Memphis because they watch one of my videos and not know that it can theoretically be dangerous and get harmed because of me or because of you and not at least know, hey, have your head on a swivel. Know that this is dangerous. Just be careful around there. I'm not telling you not to go. I go. 
We have we've done bus tours there. We're not saying don't go. We're saying if you do go, know the risk and take preventative measures. And the other thing that I thought would happen is Graceland should have a lot of stroke in that town. They're the biggest reason why people come to Memphis. Outside of that, there's other reasons people go to Memphis, but the biggest reason is Graceland, hands down. About 600,000 visitors a year on average. They should have enough stroke that they go to the city of Memphis and go, guys, y'all have got to enforce these laws. You've got to clean this up. Y'all are costing us money, which is costing you money. But have you ever heard them do that? I haven't. And they, I just feel a responsibility because I know people watch these things and they see us out there walking around and doing things and they think, oh, well, they're just out walking around. Well, heck, I was out walking around the Bahamas and didn't know it was dangerous. Yeah. I wish somebody had told me I would have taken a little more care. I walked around there like, right, and I didn't have a weapon with me in the Bahamas. I normally have a weapon with me, you know? And so I didn't know I was taking my life in my own hands when I was there. Well, how much, uh, I was going to ask you this before we, we leave, how much does a ticket like that cost? You know, I don't know. Um, I think the boat, and I'm not going to swear to what I'm going to tell you, but I think for Lori and I, we had a stateroom with a gondola or with a veranda. So okay. we had a one that's on the outside of the boat. You can get one on the inside of the boat that's cheaper, uh, that doesn't have a window. It has a fake window with a video on it. Um, to make it look like you can see out. I, I looked in one to see what it was. I think, Trey, $3,500, $3,600. Uh, together? Together. For both of us. And that included the stateroom, all-inclusive food. Now, that was not our air flights. Yeah, right. But that's it may not be that much. I honestly don't know how much it was. I don't remember. It was a long time ago when I paid for that, so I don't remember. Um, but I think that, I think it was about $3,500 for the two of us would okay. be my guess. See maybe that that maybe right. 14, maybe let's say 15, $1,600 each. I was thinking guess. probably with you with all eating and drinks and everything would be about 1600. Yeah. It's, it's, and I know that Disney is more expensive than other boats. So you can go on regular so, cruise lines for so a lot do, less money. You, you do see like Mickey Mouse and Goofy and. Well, now that's a, that's a good question. They have the characters are there. You get to meet Minnie and Mickey and Goofy and the princesses. And I saw Chip and Dale and Daffy Duck and Donald Duck and, and the pirate and his sidekick. I mean, there's all that kind of stuff going on. They have bingo. I played bingo. They have electronic bingo. It was a lot of fun. I actually won one of the games um, and won some money. They have um, they have adults only areas like nightclubs and stuff. I didn't go in any of those, but I know they're there. For the kids, they have the pool. They have a screen, and they'll show Disney movies that giant screen. They have uh, play areas for the younger children, maybe three years and younger, where you can go leave them, and they can play there, and they'll take care of them and change their diapers and all that. Then they have a play area for the children, maybe four to six, something like that, that you can go check them in and they can go oh, play they and move from area to area. So they have things for the kids to do. Um, they have putt-putt on there. I saw uh, basketball. There was full basketball courts. Okay, I love They that. have a, a giant stage that they put on shows and show movies. They have shopping. They have... Um, uh, they have a, a mystery that you can solve around the whole boat. And you, oh, go to these, you go to these pictures and you hold this thing up and the picture will do stuff and you solve things on the, and that's all you have to go all over the boat to solve it. So they have a lot of cool stuff. Did you do it's, that? I, I did a little bit of it. I didn't finish it just because of sheer time, but I did mess with, I filmed a little bit of that stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's Disney. Disney is always, my experience has always been that Disney's first class in everything that they do. Yeah. You know, we'll go and stay for a week sometimes at the, um, at one of the Disney resorts and, and go and do park hopper where we can go to, and we'd love to eat at the restaurants. If, uh, I don't know how much you've ever been to Disney. Have you been? No, uh, to Disney. Yeah. I've been. To okay. Disney. So Disney world, 
when you go there uh, on the right hand side, they have the contemporary hotel and on the top of it's the California grill. And you can watch the fireworks at night from the California grill. Now you have to make reservations there way ahead. Very, very expensive, but a number one food, first class, everything. And that's just Disney. This boat was first class, everything. I have no complaints about it of any kind. All of our waiters and waitresses, everybody that took care of us, everybody was nice. When you saw somebody, they said, hello, how are you? Do you need anything? Are you having a good day? And I'm talking about everybody. I'm talking about if it was a guy outside swabbing the decks, if it was somebody vacuuming, if whoever it was, they always spoke to you. It was first class. I highly recommend it. Um, just great fun. We will do it again. And being able to do it with snow on the ground made it extra special because we left from terrible weather and went. I was able to swim and scuba or snorkel and do all that stuff and then come back to the snow. So it was a, it was a great time and uh, just fun. And I, like I say, I filmed a lot of it. My wife gets annoyed with me because she's like, do you have to film all the time? And the answer is yes. It's because fun. people want to see this stuff. Now that I filmed it, the next time I go, I don't have to film it because there's nothing new to show. Right. You know, so I can enjoy it one time. But I did get an Elvis story. Um, and I got some other stuff. I did. I filmed me playing bingo and how that works. And just to give you little details about little things that you need to know about how the uh, dinner works, how um, checking in works, how checking out works, how um, just just little nuanced things that you need to know that if you know them ahead of time, it saves you a little bit of time. So I'll probably be doing a video just about those little nuanced things um, that you need to know as a, as a person on a Disney cruise, how it works. But uh, it was fantastic, and I will definitely do it again. Yeah, I want to do one. Sounds yeah. Fun. Yeah, it's great. It's great fun. So, friends, thank you all for watching. Make sure if, if you haven't watched the Elvis in Nassau, Bahamas, Paradise Island at the Paradise Island Hotel, October 1969 with Priscilla. If you haven't seen that, a lot of people don't know Elvis went to the Bahamas, and he absolutely did. There's photo proof of it. He's on that beach. And I've never seen anybody go there and do that story. So I was lucky enough to be able to go there and do that story. And he is indeed on that beach. So tighten up, go check out for that video. Go to Globe Trotting with Trey and check out his videos. What's your latest, Trey? My latest um, is uh, the Dallas Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. Elvis played in 1955 in a wrestling ring because the Dallas Sportatorium was a wrestling joint, famous wrestling place. And unfortunately, in 2003, it was knocked down. But I go back to the location. I stand on the ground where Elvis, Scotty, and Bill was in a wrestling ring. And my favorite wrestler of all time, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Everybody knows Stone Cold. He got his start in the Sportatorium in Dallas. And if you, uh, uh, the, the Iron Claw movie that's at theaters now is depicted at the Dallas Sportatorium because really? that's those, uh, the Von Erics. That was their building. That was where they wrestled and they show it in the movie. Uh, and the interesting thing they did, Billy, in the movie, though, was they uh, uh, the Dallas Sportatorium, by my research, the entrance was on the street side. In the movie, they flipped the entrance to the back of the building because they wanted to see downtown Dallas behind the building, uh -huh. which in reality, the downtown is like that. You see it in my film. But they made the entrance the other side just for the movie. For the movie. So you could see it. Yeah, that's cool. I watch that, and also I uh, I have a show where I um, I show you the speech notes from uh, Elvis's top ten outstanding men of America in 1971, and uh, um, he he I have him do the speech, and I show the notes that he used that night. And also, you talked to Bill Morris, right? And, and you and I talked to Bill Morris uh, a few years ago, and I uh, included uh, uh, Bill's story because Bill was instrumental in making that happen for Elvis. He sure was. And Absolutely. Bill's one of our friends and really an outstanding man and um, really... 92. A, yeah, I wish he could still be in office there in, in Shelby County. I think the place would be a lot better. Yeah, he cleaned it up. Well, thank y'all for listening and tighten up every chance you get. And don't be wick -wonk.